post solstice after Sankaranti. The first full moon day is called as Daipusam. That which brings you victory, he got the fame of being the greatest warrior ever. Absolutely failed in his mission, but he is a success for us. Today is referred to as uh, Taipusam in the Tamil culture, which is considered to be the most effervescent of the various spiritual events that this culture is full of. Literally, every day of the 365 days are marked for different aspects of life. But this day, which is uh, the first Pardami or the full moon day, post solstice after Sankaranti, the first full moon day is called as Daipusam. Largely in the country, in the larger part of the country, it is known as the Dhanya Pardami. Dhanya means uh, it is the full, full moon of fulfillment. In many ways, because of the nature of what happens on this planet in relationship with the sun, this is considered to be the most generous full moon of the year. When I say generous, one who knows how to get the best out of life, one who is seeing how to make this life in the best possible way. One will attain to maximum amount of… or one will reap maximum harvest at this time. So it's called as Dhanya Pavnami, the full moon of fulfillment. The moon has already come up in a glorious way. <sighs> there are many things connected with this. This is considered also in southern India largely. For ages, people always saw this as a day to develop instruments of victory, that which brings you victory, success. In material world, in the emotional world and in the spiritual world, this is the day when one haunts their instruments which will bring success or victory in these different dimensions. The legend goes out to say that it is on this day that Parvati gave the… the whale or the spear to Skanda, who is known as Muruga in the south. He is Skanda, he is Kumara, he is Subramanya and he is Muruga, a different geography is called him differently but started as skanda. So with this instrument or this… with this weapon of a spear, he got the fame of being the greatest warrior ever. Fought across the subcontinent, it is said he went beyond the present borders of what we call as Bharat, because his name reverberated in the Persian culture as Iskanda, went further north up into Central Asia and become Iskandar. And even today the word slightly mispronounced is used as Sikandar, 
somebody who is victorious over everybody, who becomes an emperor of all the rulers, but never held a kingdom. He only fought battles because he was committed to annihilating injustice. The boy was angry <laughs> and uh, when somebody of immense capabilities and hugely blessed becomes angry, <laughs> so it happens and uh, Wherever he thought there is injustice, he started killing. Well, literally his adolescence and youth, as a youth, he largely killed people. We don't know how many, but across the subcontinent he did and he also went slightly out. Then he realized, what is justice? And what is injustice he is not always an absolute. It's a question of perspective most of the time. Then he realized that somewhere deep inside, the fury of who he was is seeking revenge in the form of justice. When you go after somebody thinking you will serve justice, they will only experience it as revenge. So I am not trying to say there is no justice at all, but there isn't. So that is Kanda's story but he got his weapon of instrument, according to the legend, on this day. That is why he was so successful in his mission. Well, ultimately, he came to realization that his mission was not right, but that is also considered victory in this culture. Anywhere else, he would be rated as a failure because he failed in his mission. But in this culture, which is not of straight lines, we see this as a success because he realized in his activity in the world he failed, but he realized we hold that, we hold that as the greatest success, not material things. If he had listed this many victories and if his mission was complete, only then an intellectually constipated society would consider him a success. But here, he failed, absolutely failed in his mission, but he is a success for us. <clears throat> this is a day which is considered as the best day to start one's pilgrimage. Pilgrimage always meant a journey in which you'll obliterate yourself once again. Our idea of victory is, we are obliterated. Our idea of victory is not piling up people and sitting on top of their heads. Our idea of victory is to obliterate ourselves, to dissolve ourselves, because this is a land of devotion. The object of devotion is only dissolution. We may use another object as a means to dissolve, but the fundamental objective is to dissolve. Well, does it mean to say this is a culture committed to failure? No. Because within the framework of one's intellect, if once it's there, once it's here, once it's here, you would think, he is low, this is medium, this is high. But we always understood in this culture, the planet is round and it's spinning, your ideas of what is low, what is medium, what is high, you're totally messed up in your head. 
you don't have a larger perspective of life. You're counting the steps that you climb because you're horribly identified with a little bit of earth that you gathered in the form of your flesh and bone. Because of that, your perspective is all messed up. This is a day where people start a pilgrimage, particularly in Tamil Nadu. Because pilgrimage means we have started the process to dissolve ourselves, wear ourselves down in every possible way. People walk hundreds of miles. There is a… still a vibrant culture of pilgrimage here, that people walk hundreds of miles to get to the… generally to the Murugan temple in Tamil Nadu, but various kinds happening across southern India. Because according to the position of the planet, we have recognized whatever we do within ourselves for our inner well-being finds results much more easily during this time. As I said, this is a generous or a benevolent time.